Welcome back guys. I got a really cool product to talk about which is the iOptron Skyguider Pro. I have seen quite a few good reviews online about it and I do have some things to offer some additional information that, that's probably not covered. In the first of this video I'll talk about what, what's included and uh, how it's made my overall opinion of, uh, of that battery life that sort of thing and then I'll show you camera lens setups everything from a 14 millimeter to a 600 millimeter and how that's going to work out for you I'll give you some exposure times and some examples and uh, hopefully uh, you'll stick around for this review I'm pretty sure there's something in here that'll be helpful to you when you receive your iOptron Skyguider Pro what's included in the box will be a very short but I think thorough instruction manual, counterweight bar, counterweight, several different heads depending on what type of lens or equipment you're using, the, uh, the base for setting your latitude, this bracket which you can actually use several different ways, the Skyguider Pro itself, charging cable, the additional hardware you're going to need uh, depending on the mount head that you use and a soft carrying case so this is all the equipment as you as you receive it minus an allen wrench which I went out and into my shop and brought this um, I keep two of these on me when I bring this somewhere because the one they give you is just a single allen wrench and you're likely to, to lose it so if I had the absolute best advice for traveling with this thing is bring several Allen wrenches with you and like put a couple in different places. You're likely going to lose that small one that comes with it at night fumbling around. It's just it's bound to happen. Anyway, uh, let's, let's talk about how this thing's made. So first off, uh, my initial impression of the, the guiding unit itself is that it's actually pretty well made. Um, I've heard of people refer to it as plastic -y, uh Nothing could be really further from the truth. Uh, this part of it that covers the electronics is, is actually a really hard, durable plastic. And um, this, but the rest of it is, is, is really nice, uh, well-painted metal. And it has a cap here. For uh, it's actually a plug for your polar scope, and the back one is is a nice threaded one. And the uh, the polar scope itself is is really nice. I'm I'm impressed with that. And I'll get more into that later. You got your ports. You got a guide port here, camera jack, USB, and your auxiliary or HBX. It's called here. Um, as far as the gearing, you, you'd lock it down simply by just turning this clockwise until it stops. You don't have to force it really far. Um, and it, it does a really good job of, of locking into the drive. It's, I'm impressed with, with how it's made. If you see here, you've got a different function keys. Let me turn it around where you can see it. If you notice on the control panel you've got these right and left arrow keys, power on switch with an indicator and you also have a solar lunar one half one times and a south polar setup. Um, I have heard it suggested that the uh, the one half X is useless. Um, nothing could be further from the truth. If you if you're taking a single exposure and trying to merge a landscape with a starry night sky, then you want the one half speed. If you're doing composite imaging, where you're taking a separate exposure for your foreground and then also for your your stars then you'll, you'll stick to the regular uh, star rate. But that is useful. Um, anybody that says otherwise is, hasn't put it to use. Um, 
there's quite a few people who'd like to do single single shot images and and that's where that would come in but uh just a little note whenever you see um, solar and lunar tracking as you have here where it's, it's separate it's likely a really good unit um, that means it can run at varying speeds so it's not your typical uh you know uh, sixty dollar plastic junk it's uh it's actually a precision machine and um, that's a good indicator of that as far as the battery life goes it, it's totally ridiculous um i have to agree with everybody who said that you just can't run it down it just seems to go and go and go and go uh off a of full charge this thing is is unreal you'll get several nights so uh uh, performance in cold weather really good uh, so battery life gets uh, a 10 plus for me it's it's fantastic so this attachment pretty much if you just want to connect a ball head directly to the guider with a small camera lens you know lightweight setup then that's the way to go and this will be for your your larger telephoto lenses I'll, I'll show you that later and then you also have this dovetail style for your uh, small telescopes and that sort of thing so really cool uh, that you have all these different options um, it's not something you want to fumble around with in the dark uh, you see all these really small bolts here if you lose those you're going to be digging through a Lowe's or Home Depot to go find them as far as the uh, latitude base goes you don't really necessarily need it um, it's fairly well made it, it serves its purpose but like let's say you can find one of these uh, second hand um, then uh, you might get the price cut a little bit uh, regular panning head if, if you're already into photography and you have uh, some some really good equipment it might be better than using this um, I've had no trouble with it I just think that it, it could have been made a little bit better these teeth here are metal so that's a plus nothing plasticky about the uh, the way it's geared up as far as your latitude markers they're not very precise as you can see that's that's common until you get way up in the thousands of dollars on telescope mounts and that sort of thing so don't expect much here it's just a a rough idea of where you need to be at but um, overall uh, pretty well well built um, mostly metal very little plastic in the in the whole setup here so let's uh, let's look at some ways to uh, to use this with varying focal length camera lenses and that sort of thing and uh, I'll show you how I set it up and for this demo I'm just using a simple pretty standard aluminum tripod here as you can see and for continuity's sake I'm using the ioptron ball head that they offer <clears throat> when you go to purchase the uh, sky guider a lot of the retailers will also show you this ball head so I'll tell you what I think about that too um, anyway let's get into some of the setups so for small lenses like 14 millimeter, 50 millimeter, that sort of thing, where a counterweight isn't necessary, we'll use this part here with the uh, quarter 20 bolt through it. And you just connect with these three bolts here. And this will mount directly on the front of the sky guider. And then the, uh, the head here will go onto that. I'll show you that now. So here you can see full frame Canon 6D, relatively he heavy camera for a DSLR, and a Rokinon 14mm lens. Um, with this setup, all you really need is just the ball head attached here. The uh, downside to that is you have to polar align prior to connecting the head to the, uh, to the tracker here. So that's something to consider. But as you can see, uh, no problem at all carrying the weight. The tracking is, is really good. This will work with your nifty 50 and that sort of thing. Anything I would I would call a small lens, um, this is relatively light. This setup is perfectly fine. 
Um, no stress on the unit. Tracking is good. So this is how you would assemble it. And as you can see, you just lock this in here. Really simple. And uh, the advantage to this is you put this in your case, throw it in your bag, you got your camera and your lenses. I mean, you're ready to go. You can, you can hike really easy with that. So that's a really good setup. For your larger telephoto lenses, such as this Canon 70 to 200, you're going to need this part bolted into the bottom of the um, bracket here. And you'll need your counterweight bar and your counterweight. I'll show you that now. So as you can see, the 70 to 200 with the Canon 6D and the weight not quite bottomed out here is pretty well balanced. I have no trouble with this this setup at all. It's when I go above a 70 to 200 that I start having problems. And I'll show you that with the Sigma. But um, for all intensive purposes, up to say a 200 millimeter lens of about the same weight, equivalent weight, you should be fine. I've got a little bit more wiggle room here to come back if I need to. Um, the advantage of this setup obviously is using longer focal lengths. Um, disadvantage is that now you're carrying this weight with you. Um, something to keep in mind here is for declination, you have two little thumb screws here on the sides. Um, and basically by loosening those, you're able to pull straight up on this and pull your, your lens and your camera unit separate from the uh, tracking unit. And that's a little dangerous. Uh, so get a good firm grip on everything before you try to adjust your declination. Um, as far as guiding goes, uh, you're only going to be able to do it in RA. I mean, obviously there's, there's no gearing for your declination. So in that respect, um, just for what I would consider wide field astrophotography, it, it's really good, but I wouldn't invest a whole lot of money personally into this unit if, uh, Deep sky astrophotography is your is your goal. So here I've I've bottomed out my counterweight on the shaft, and I've introduced the uh, Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens. And as you can see, it's if I turn my hand loose, it's it's gone. Like so, my solution uh, instead of an extra counterweight, go with the uh, Williams Optic extension that's made for this unit. And then uh, you can slide your counterweight down further. You don't introduce quite as much weight as you would if you used a second counterweight. But as you can see, this uh, Sigma 150 to 600, which is pretty popular lens, really high focal length, um, just not possible. It's <laughs> it's not going to do it. Uh, no way you fry your fish here. It's just not going to happen. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but well, another advantage to the telephoto lens setup with the counterweight is that you can see directly through your polar scope. So you get everything set up. You don't have to remove the lens to actually uh, polar align. That's pretty cool. Now, if you were going to mount a small telescope rather than this here, you would uh, use your hardware to mount your saddle here and then connect directly to the uh, Sky Guider Pro that way. I don't have one available at the moment to uh, show you that. But I will show you something of interest here. So here you can see the uh, mounting plate as it would be used for your large telephotos or your telescope. And uh, you can see how it locks on. And what you've got to do to to turn it in declination and the trouble is if you back these out just too much I mean you're dropping everything if you hear this strange noise in the background it's Renzo say hello to everybody <laughs> anyway French Bulldogs you hear them breathing a mile away but anyway that's that's a factor um, from personal experience, uh, I take it to about 200 millimeter 
and that's where I pretty much draw the line. Um, you could do better than that by guiding. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. An important note that I need to make is that you need a tripod with a removable head. That's an absolute must. Um, most of your, your cheaper lower end tripods aren't going to have a detachable head. So that's something to consider. Um, you're definitely going to need it to operate the unit. So be mindful of that. So this is what you'll see in the polar scope, except it'll be illuminated. And there's actually varying levels of brightness. So that's, that's a really good thing. Really easy to use. So likes and dislikes. First being, it's very portable. That's number one, that's why I got it. I'm thinking uh, my next trip to Japan, uh, Mount Fuji with the Milky Way behind it, that sort of thing. That's pretty much what this is designed for. And um, that's why I've got it. Another huge like is the battery life. It's it's ridiculous. Like I said, it's it's unbelievable how good and how long this battery runs and how well it stands up to temperature variation. Really awesome. Good job. <clears throat> Build quality. Um, I've heard some some kind of neutral opinions on that. Mine is is good. I, I like it. I think it's pretty sturdy. Uh, if you dropped it on this part maybe you do some damage to it i bet it would still work um, very sturdy it, it feels good it's it's painted well it's made well uh, no qualms there um, like i said for what it's intended this and my regular camera setup with a tripod and and can go practically anywhere that that's awesome that's uh it's, it's worth the investment for that alone. Um, when we start getting into the telephoto range or a small telescope, I'm kind of on the fence with that. Now, the reason I say that is, is you have uh, no gearing in your declination. So just how precise can you get for a uh, wide field telescope like the uh, ZWO one um, that everybody's recommending for this. Yeah, sure, fine. Um, but for for anything really serious, deep sky, you might um, spend the extra money on a really good mount, some type of upper end uh, equatorial. If you like to travel and you're perfectly fine with your wide field targets, then, then this is a really good way to start out. And it's also a really good additional piece of equipment. Like I said, I've got plans for this. I've got all kinds of ideas. Um, some of the locations that wouldn't be accessible with a, a telescope, um, typical telescope setup. Now I can I can take this. On the telephoto side, again, um, I think I draw the line at, at 200 millimeter personally. I don't want to invest any money in guiding on it. So I won't make any additional reviews as far as, as guiding is concerned. Um, not to say that it, that's not a, a possibility. It's obviously got a guide port and there's people who are successful with that. That's just not something I'm interested in investing in. Um, but up to say 200 millimeter, like such as this lens here, uh, I love it and um, <clears throat> can't go wrong. Now, um, the things I don't like about it are, are pretty pretty lame, probably, but I'll, I'll pass them along anyway. Four starters. This plug. I don't know if it's different on all of them, but I don't want to be out at night trying to pull this out. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, I've actually got tired of fumbling with it and just use a pair of pliers. You know, like that, that's aggravating. That's that's like I said, that's pretty lame if that's my only argument. Um, that and uh, I think I feel like the declination could have been designed a little bit differently in such a way that that this doesn't lift directly off. Now, um, if you maintain a certain amount of tension here, it can't come off because 
it's actually beveled on the end to prevent that. And, um, I think that's their idea. But as you can see, there, this bevel right here, it if those thumb screws are in just slightly, it, it won't pull out. But I mean, you're in the dark, you're messing around. It's, I can see where there's there's probably been people who have dropped their camera equipment using this um, if they weren't careful. So if you do buy one, just exercise a lot of caution in, in terms of your declination, adjusting that. That's, just be mindful of that. Another thing that, that's a little disappointing is uh, just a, maybe a couple more inches on this counterweight bar would have been enough to uh, support say the uh, Sigma 150 to 600 like I showed you. Um, that's within the uh, realm of the weight of this unit and uh, having to buy an, an additional piece of equipment is, is kind of a bummer on that. Okay, so let's keep it real here. Um, assuming you're not guiding at all and you've just polar aligned it, and I'm talking just a pretty fair uh, polar alignment, nothing real fussy, just you get it lined up like you're supposed to and it matches the app. With the 14 millimeter on a full frame camera, I was easily getting two minutes, and that's. Uh, when I say two minutes, you could you could go farther than that, but consistent frames, two minutes. That's that's your realm there. Um, with the 50 millimeter, probably about a minute and a half. Um, the 200 millimeter range, I was lucky to get 30 30 seconds consecutively. I've seen online where people are saying they're getting better than that. Um, this is many nights, um, many different polar alignments. And uh, 30 seconds is like the kill zone for the 200 millimeter range without guiding. You'll take uh, maybe like uh, 60 or 70 subs and then realize that over half of them are, are trailed. Um, that's my experience. Um, take it for what you want there. Uh, so 30 seconds isn't a whole lot of time. Um, it kind of is for 200 millimeter range, but it's it's not long enough really to get faint details and that sort of thing. What I did find was uh, with my 100 millimeter macro, I was getting consecutive minute long exposures, and that seemed to be like my favorite lens as far as semi telephoto. So with the 100 millimeter macro, I was at approximately one minute on all of them. Um, the last one I shot was Andromeda. And matter of fact, uh, I absolutely love this macro lens. I'll talk about that in another video, but it's so flat and so aberration free for, for stars. It's, it's amazing, but I love pairing this with the Sky Guider. I think it's on the upper limits of its potential, um, unguided that is. Uh, so pretty much everything in this case over here is just off limits, like the 150 to 600. And um, as a matter of fact, uh, 200 is 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 asking a lot. <clears throat> um, you can read some of the forums online on some of the results people are getting, but I'm telling you, consecutive results uh, challenge that. See if you're if you're doing better than 30 seconds uh, unguided, then. Uh, and getting consecutively good results, then you're doing really good. Here's my final thoughts. Um, it's very well designed. It's very portable. Easy to polar align. Easy to use. Really good battery life. And the tracking is pretty good. Um, I've used quite a few star trackers, and I'd have to say that it's, it's spot on. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, who would I recommend it to? Um, not anybody who's looking for a cure-all for uh, a an entry-level astrophotography setup. I've heard it mentioned that way. Um, I wouldn't agree with that. I think uh, for somebody who's trying to do wide-field astrophotography, include the uh, landscape and the stars, then it's a fantastic device. And the ability to take it with you anywhere you go, it, that's amazing. 
airplane, travel, whatever. Um, now, the minute you start pushing it to its limits and putting large focal length te telephoto lenses or um, high magnification telescopes on it and getting into the guiding aspect of it, uh, at that point, I'm kind of on the fence. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, just go out and buy an equatorial mount, even if it's an entry level, uh, you'll do better. Um, so for guys who have to travel or like to travel, like I said, wide field, go for it. Um, if you're looking for a cure-all for a tracking problem you're having, then uh, you might want to look somewhere else. Uh, I'm not going to uh, smash on that aspect too much. I'm just being realistic with you. Like I said, my numbers are, are really accurate. Uh, the 100 millimeter focal length lens was kind of a sweet spot <coughs> with a some exposure I took of Andromeda, but as you know, that's not really filling the frame with the subject. Um, so, whatever you can put into 100 millimeters is is likely going to be a really good target for a semi telephoto focal length, you know, above 50 millimeter. Uh, overall, I really love it. Um, I don't regret purchasing it because I, like I said, I have projects in mind that that I will do with it. Um, likely I won't be using the counterweight aspect of it very often and uh, as I said I won't pursue the uh, the auto guiding function of it you'll have to look to somebody else for that um, I just don't recommend that aspect of it especially with the declination and all that you know it's limit, very limited in terms of deep sky astrophotography but overall um, fantastic product love it um, don't regret it, and I hope this was really helpful, and I uh, wish you nothing but clear skies, as always. And Jeff Lucas, for you, I have found the pause button, man. Thank you so much. Clear skies, buddy. Just look what I have to look forward to. <laughs> it's been like this since I got back from Florida. It's like I've got all this open space free of, mostly free of light pollution and like this, nonstop.